Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Borg. If you haven't already, please continue to subscribe down below. Up above, these use which keep us growing to 215 or more by the end of March. Me at the Reading Royal Stadium after covering our PPL Center yesterday. The NCAA Regionals, and I'm going to review those. The games from Quinnipiac, also St. Cloud State, and then Michigan versus, of course, AIC, who actually played them really well for being almost a 1,300 undergrad school, a school that not many people heard of their first tournament with Langer, Eric Lang. Um, played very well. But let's get into it. Uh, Michigan versus AIC, the goalies are Portillo and Calvaruso. Kucharski, the Canes pick from um, AIC, he's unfortunately was banged up. So Calvaruso, who they said they brought on his depth mainly in the post-game press conference, uh, was able to take the nod as a fifth-year grad senior, and he was able to really step up and do well for them and keep them in that game so they even had a chance to beat Michigan. Let me also try to lower this angle so it's better. Um, and then when it came to that, Michigan was able to have a goal by Van Wy, who doesn't even really score, uh, his fifth on a net crashing rebound. Uh, Luke Hughes did get the assist. And then there was a beautiful pass to Ethan Edwards crashing, but he was able to score. Calvin Russo, though, was as advertised. He was very poised in net. And Brendan Brisson was able to score on a one-timer that he absolutely launched one home there. So this game was pretty good. Dylan Duke also was able to slam one in, a guy that's going to be on Tampa one day. So all the NHL draft picks for Michigan were able to play very, very well. And then when it came to AIC, they had pretty good battle in their game and were able to really progress well throughout the game, stay in the game, but not by not necessarily by the scorecard, obviously, but in terms of actually fighting to the end, playing a good game, uh, giving their all. I thought they played a very solid game and uh, were, really, were really solid there, where the second game was the closer game at 5-4. Of course, where the first game, obviously, it wasn't as close in scoring, but um, I still thought AIC did play a good game and were pretty square and were pretty good in that tilt. It's just they you're not going to beat Michigan. They lost 5-3. to three. They were able to come back late, and that's because of the great battle they had and the great fight they had in the entire game. Where, again, Van Nuys scored the first one. Ethan Edwards, then Regale had a nice goal uh, for them to be able to bring it back. Justin Young had a beautiful goal where he was able to be patient, wait, and then score and fire that thing home. And then Blake Bennett also had a goal who was huge for them uh, in this tournament as well. And then now, let's go into the second cap of the game, Winnipeg versus St. Cloud. Uh, which, of course, would have been the other game. Win. When it comes to Quinnipiac versus St. Cloud, I think Quinnipiac was the favorite coming in. They have more guys that are considered NHL draftees, per se. And uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they continue to do now facing the juggernaut of Michigan because they allowed... They, the Quinnipiac had a great first, where Michigan had, had a great second, actually kept AIC in it a lot in the first then kind of fell asleep a bit in the third. Mel Pearson even talked about that. But when it came to uh, Quinnipiac, they started really good, had an awful second period, uh, recovered, and then were able to get the victory, where they even allowed a goal in the dwindling seconds, uh, where I even thought St. Cloud played a very good game in this, where Nolan Walker was able to steal it and fire at home. I think the second game, the first game, Michigan deserved to win. They were the better team. It was just a good battle by AAC, and they were what was advertised. They were a battling team that always stayed in. When it came to the second game, though, Quinnipiac versus St. Cloud, that was a really good, really close game. And St. Cloud almost had them. They almost came back in the end, but Quinnipiac was able to fight it off. And uh, that was in no small part due to Peretz, who uh, continues to just be absolutely ridiculous um, in net for Quinnipiac, where, yes, he let in his most goals of the season, but St. Cloud also probably gave him some of the most pressure of the season as well. So those two things equate, and that makes sense. Castor wasn't supposed to be starting. Arenic was uh, the Kings prospect. He was sick and ill. Uh, Castor had to end up starting. And you could tell the effect of not having the starting goal even for St. Cloud. He wasn't bad, but that first goal allowed you want to stick that away and not into your net, obviously, on the slap shot. 
so things happen. But you would like to obviously have had your head guy going if you're saying Cloud, and I think that had a huge factor in the uh, result. But it is what it is. This has been a quick video, about five minutes, five and a half minutes, on Quinnipiac versus St. Cloud and Michigan versus AIC. Tomorrow night at PPL Center, I will be covering the game of Quinnipiac and Michigan. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please need to subscribe down below. Up from these views, which keeps going to 215 or more. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe.